briefcase, briefs, and so much more. LS Data's got what you're looking for. In 1971, the Delaware Court of Chancery heard a riveting case, Schnell v. Chris Craft Industries, Inc., where the balance of power in corporate decision-making was at stake. In the thick of the controversy were Chris Craft shareholders, who were at odds with the company's executives and sought to overturn a crucial change that dominated the annual meeting schedule. Their accusation was clear. The company's top brass had revised the annual meeting date to deliberately discourage their attempts to elect a fresh board of directors and seize control of management. The dispute was anchored on the flexibility offered by the corporation's bylaws and the Delaware Corporation Law. Basically, the company was within its right to adapt the annual meeting's timing as it saw fit. However, the plaintiffs argued that this amendment was purely a strategic move designed to sabotage their election bid. The plot thickened as the plaintiffs accused the defendant's management of gatekeeping, asserting they systematically blocked their attempts to gather enough votes to affect the management overhaul. To add fuel to the fire, they claimed that a shady sale of a television station, allegedly orchestrated to line certain directors' pockets, was on the cards. Despite the plaintiffs' vehement allegations, the defense countered with a plausible explanation. The annual meeting's shift to a pre-Christmas date was a simple matter of weather and holiday mail delays. Insisting on their legal right to amend the meeting's schedule, the defense maintained their innocence, denying all allegations of hindrance and pointing out that the law granted registered stockholders exclusive voting rights, except in unique cases. The court's role was, thus, to sift through the allegations and counter-allegations and decide where justice lay. Given the context, a mere proxy contest was not generally enough ground for courts to intervene. Still, they had to consider the substance and timing of the bylaw amendments and weigh them against the plaintiff's claims. As the gavel went down, the verdict was clear. The court ruled in favor of the defendants, finding the plaintiff's sluggish attempts to affect management change inadequate to tip the scales against the company's legal compliance on meeting arrangements. Furthermore, they found the plaintiff's allegations were based on uncertain claims and lacked substance. However, the court invalidated the adjustments made to the corporate bylaws, setting the annual meeting for January 11, 1972. In conclusion, while it may be challenging to shake up the established order in corporate governance, it is critical to ensure that internal processes are fair, unbiased, and transparent for all parties involved. Case briefs and so much more. LS Data's got what you're looking for. Visit lsd.law. Elevate your mind. Leave the stress of class.